Hello, everyone. All are back. Okay, so can we start the session? Can you please uh, raise your hands if you are there? Okay. Okay, great. <clears throat> Let's continue to the next module. Our next module is on natural language processing. In this, we will see how the natural language service works on the Azure AI cloud. So what is mean by natural language processing? Natural language processing means when we provide the text data, we have to get some informations about that particular text. We have to do text analysis to understand what are the different entities there inside the text, what is the language used inside the text. We can also convert the text from one language to another language. We can do text summarization. We can create conversational AI applications using text because suppose if the user is uh, asking for something, some question, so our conversational AI applications needs to respond with a response. That means it has to send a response okay mostly like a chatbots you must be aware about the chatbot so here what is a response it is responding with a text response or image response or some other kind of response so how this works usually when you provide a text the text is first Con converted into tokens because it is not possible to process the entire text contents you provide in one go. So it will be divided into tokens. So in a simple sense, a token means it can be a, a single word, a small, a small word, or we can say it's a group of characters like uh, three to four characters uh, which is which forms a part of the word or maybe a complete word which is a small word so anyway the text will be converted into tokens and then our language model is going to do some processing on the text and it is analyzing it and determining what is the sentiment what are the language what is the language of the text what are the different entities inside it then converting from one language to another language or summarizing a larger text into small text content like if i have a uh, 20 lines of statement which we can convert into just a two to three lines that is called a summarization so in natural language processing and the conversational AI, if you see in the Azure, we have language service, speech service, 
and translator service comes under this category. So natural language services and conversational AI services. We can say language services. Inside this language services, we have different features. Speech services, which also deals with the text uh, and audio. And we have a translator service. So if you see language services, it primarily performs language detection key phrase extraction, named entity detection, sentiment analysis and opinion mining, personal information detection, summarization, question and answering, and conversational language understanding. Language detection is very simple, just to understand which language is used in that text. Key phrase extraction is inside the word or inside the statement. What are the key phrases? Uh, means the maybe a single word or maybe a group of words that that is used as a phrase. Okay, so what are the key phrases used in the inside that text content? So it will be extracting the key phrases from every statement in that uh, uh, in that given text or named entity detection named entity means an entity can be a location person name or maybe a, 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 a duration date and time something like that so suppose if i'm saying i want to book a ticket from mumbai to uh, maybe Delhi tomorrow. In this given text, book a ticket is a key phrase. But from where to where? So there are two locations mentioned. One is Mumbai and another one is Delhi. So Mumbai and Delhi will be detected as location entities. And when I want to book it tomorrow, so that is de detected as date and time entity. And sentiment analysis and opinion mining. So if, if you want to uh, identify whether this uh, text is having a positive uh, content or positive uh, or sentiment or negative sentiment or it's a neutral sentiment so that will be returned by the sentiment analysis personal information detection so if your text contains some personal information like a mobile number email credit card number pin number password okay so these informations are present then we can say it is personal information so we have to detect these personal informations so that we can mask those contents if necessary Summarization, as I mentioned, large text contents can be summarized into few statements. Question and answering means we can create a uh, question and answer pair so that uh, customers can, customers means the users can get the answers for uh, their queries from this question answering knowledge base. So knowledge base is a collection of questions and answers, means a key and value. So uh, we can integrate this with a chatbots or th that kind of applications so that whenever a, uh, for example, if I'm creating a customer care application, the customers can make a request for uh, asking a product information or maybe uh, some kind of help. But instead of uh, reading the text, from the documents, product manuals, we can automate this process by uh, generating the answers or getting the answers from the document itself. So extracting the uh, uh, answers and uh, creating a knowledge base will help the applications to return the relevant answers immediately. Conversational language understanding is Primarily, it is called as LUIS, that is Language Understanding Service. So usually when a customer or user 
makes a request or he he enter some text we can identify what is the intent of that text for example uh, if i say get me some images of dogs so what is the action or what is the intent what i have to execute we have to execute a search operation because get me the images of dogs which means he is searching for which entity dogs so we have to perform a search action with a parameter dog so that is the intent so how we can identify what is the intent that will be done using conversational language understanding service now when it comes to speech service as we know there are different uh, uh, services comes under this it's text to speech speech to text speech translation speaker identification and language identification so if you want to convert the text into audio audio into text or converting the audio from one uh, language to another language or detecting or identifying the speakers in the audio so all these comes under the speech services and the translator service is typically used for simple text translation or a large text translation using document translation and custom translation is also possible where you can specify suppose certain uh, domain specific terminologies which uh, the system may not be able to understand for example in a medical field they are using different uh, uh, terminologies which is not easily understood by others so if you want to translate them we can have the custom translation the natural language processing capabilities in azure if you see we can use the language studio as a service or, or as a portal from where you can try all these uh, natural language processing features or services so like a vision studio we also have a language studio in this we can use the text analysis feature means if i want to uh, analyze a given text we can use the text analysis feature in the language studio for example if i have given a text like uh, i had a wonderful vacation in france so in this we can identify what what is the language used there so it's the english and sentiment is you can see uh, it is a 0 0.88 that is 0 0.88 means it is near to one one means it's a positive feedback so it's a 0 0.88 means near to one so it is a positive feedback and what are the key phrases extracted wonderful vacation is a key phrase and entity means there is an entity which is a location value what is the location here france so by analyzing this given text we can extract some informations like what language it is using what is the sentiments what is what are the key phrases used there and the, the entities in the given text question and answering is a language service and it's also called a qna service the qna service uses a knowledge base so what is a knowledge base the knowledge base is nothing but it's just a collection of questions and answers so these questions and answers you can either manually enter all the questions and answers or you can use the azure ai search service to extract the text information from word documents or pdf documents or some other external data sources and generate the questions and answers 
Okay, so it may be a generated questions. How you generate the question and answer? That is the second thing. But yes, it can be a manually entered questions and answers, or it can be a auto generated question and answers. So this question and answers can come from the Word documents, PDF documents, or the websites like uh, FAQ websites, right? So that. FAQ documents or FAQ website pages. From there, we can generate the questions and answers. Even we, we can include some built in chit chat questions. Means, like some if somebody is asking, Hello, how are you? So, how, hello, how are you is a question, but it's not part of any product document or anything like that. So, if, if there is a question comes, Hello, how are you? How you are going to handle this? For that, we have to add a chit chat. So this knowledge base, once it is generated, we can consume this knowledge base from our applications, including the chatbots. So mostly it is used with the chatbot kind of applications. For example, a, a scenario like if I'm running an organization uh, where Maybe a healthcare industry itself, if I'm considering. So I want to generate uh, uh, question and answers regarding my hospital services or uh, my org in organ in my organization. What are the different uh, services I'm offering? I have to generate some question and answers. And whenever the the customers makes a request through the web application, so I'm running a website. There is a chatbot associated with that website. So whenever the customer asks a question through the chatbot, like uh, what are the different uh, services offered by your uh, organization, or uh, which of the doctors are available, okay, or uh, what will, what can, what are the procedures for uh, a particular treatment? So all these questions we can put inside the knowledge base and when somebody ask this question it will be returning this uh, quest, uh, questions answers from the knowledge base bot service so bot service is a virtual assistant that can be integrated in uh, other application so it may be a part of your web application it may be a part of your social media applications or like messengers or whatsapp or teams so that kind of uh, uh, applications can host the chatbots or bot services so if i want to create a chatbot azure is offering a cloud service which is called a azure bot service so Azure Bot Service is a service that allow you to uh, create and deploy the chatbots uh, in, in using the Azure Cloud. Because creating the chatbots requires some programming libraries and tools, which is offered by Bot Service. For hosting this chatbots, you need a platform. That is also provided by bot service. So that means it's not only allowing the users to develop the bot applications, you can also deploy and host this chatbots uh, in the Azure cloud. So you can integrate the other services within this chatbot. For example, whenever a question comes from the user, you can connect to the QA based service, that is knowledge based service, and get the answers for that. Or you can connect to the a natural language processing service, that is, uh, uh, what to say, Louis service, language understanding service, and identify what is the intent, and accordingly we can execute some operation. Which means it is possible to integrate the uh, uh, cognitive services with chat bots. And another thing, once the chatbot is published in the cloud, 
we will be able to integrate this chatbots in different uh, host applications like uh, we can integrate this in teams slack or uh, uh, your email services or messengers all anywhere you can integrate this bot services now let's see a simple demo on the language service Okay. So this is the demo for language studio that is question and answering using language studio. So if you see the first is, uh, first thing what we have to do is we have to go to the Azure portal and create a language service. So let's go to this is still not completed. I'm not sure why. Okay, so let's go to Azure portal and search for language services. So here we have the language service. we create so this time here we can select the custom question answering so along with this default features additionally we are selecting custom question answering so these are the default features of the language service plus additionally we are enabling the custom question answering now while we create we can specify the resource group, location. And I can also specify the name of the resource. Okay, I'm selecting the Pricing tier as standard S1 and uh, question answering service also requires a search service. That search service location, we can select the same location of our language service and uh, the search service pricing tier, we can go with free, which is create it allow us to go to up to three indexes. So that is enough for Devanta scenarios. I acknowledge. Next. And I can create it. So what I have filled is just the name, resource group, subscription, pricing tier and location. And then for search service, we have selected the location and the pricing tier is index three free tier. Now we can go to language studio. Just for going into language studio, we can use language.azure.com so this is a language studio we can sign in So here we have to select a resource. I'm selecting my default directory. 
and subscription okay subscription is msdn platforms resource type is language and from here the one which we have created i'm selecting that done so the language service is created and selected in the language studio. The next step is to create a custom question answering service. So here. We can click on this create new and here you can see custom question answering, right? So custom question answering you can select. And here we can go with choose language setting for the resource. Uh, your resource page. I want to select the language when I create a project in this resource. So select this option. And click on next. Here you can see the language resource name and the search service name is by default coming. And you need to specify the project name description. Product, sorry, the project name I'm giving as Margis Travel. Description, a simple knowledge base, source language, you can say English, default answer when no answer is returned, that is no answer found. So this is the default value, means suppose if there is no matching answer found, the default value which is returned is no answer. Found. And we can review and create the project. Okay, so we have created the project. That is Margis travel project. So now we need to create a knowledge base because we have to create a set of questions and answers. So what we can do, we go to uh, add a source and you can select the URLs. So here URLs you can select because from the URLs you can add the questions or from the files you can add the questions or you can add the pre-built chit chat questions so here we can select urls so where you need to specify the url name as margie's knowledge base that is this one and the url you have to specify this one so this is a word document as you can see we can take this word document and auto detect and add all but now what it is going to do it will connect to the word file extract all the questions available in the word document and it generates the questions and answers so if you see this is the word document can you see why Margis travel, what services you provide, what destinations do you offer. So there are some questions which is which is there in, inside this document. So we can see now the questions, uh, sorry, the source is added, that is a Word document. Now we can go and edit 
that knowledge base means if we want to add some questions or uh, update the questions answers or something like that we can go to edit knowledge base So here left side, you can see all the questions which are extracted. Can you see why Margis travel? Why what services do you provide? What destinations do you offer? How can I book a flight? So all these are questions from that Margis document. Now. In the add a new question and pair dialog box we can add a question type is hello and the answer type as hi so here so here we can add a new question. So here question is hello, which means sorry. Hello, which means if there is a question comes as hello, we can add a, or we can provide an answer as hi. OK, so that is what custom questions we are adding. So editing the knowledge base means it is extracting the questions from the word documents along with that. We can add our own questions. So I have mentioned hello as the question and the hi as the answer. Now we can expand the alternate question section and add a alternate text as here, so which is an alternate phrase for hello. So here you can see hello is the question. So what I'm doing, I'm selecting this and below here alternate questions and here add an alternate question. I can give here. Right, so you can see this is an alternate question for hello. Now click on this save to save the changes. Now for testing this, we can open the test panel. So here you can see the test icon here. Click on that. And here let, let us try with a simple hi. See hi is coming as a response. If I say hello, still hi is coming because for hello, hi is coming so that it automatically understand anything related to hi or hello or here all this will return the same answer now i can ask how can i book a flight see the answer is our agents can help you book flights between any major airport or any of the major airlines. We offer com competitive fare for all flight classes and so on. So you can see this is coming from the Margis travel, right? So that means now we are done with it. That means your Margis travels document is now converted into a knowledge base and we can add our own custom questions also here 
and whenever I ask a question, it is now able to provide the answers for those questions. So here what I did, I after adding these questions, I have saved the project and the read when the sorry, I saved the project and tested it. Right. So that is the that is the testing part. That means we can test the knowledge base because it provides a built-in chat window. So here itself. So you can see the answer from the agent that is this this answer is coming. Right. So now our Q Q and A service is working fine because it's very, very simple. We just need to create a uh, language service in the Azure portal. Then opening the language studio and create a new project. After this project, we have created the questions pairs. As you can see, we have to add the questions from URLs or you can manually add the questions. So there are different sources you can see. So this is the question which I have added editorial. Now we have seen whenever we whenever we want to test, when we click on this test icon, it opens a chat window, right? So in this, we can do a chat. But this is a testing environment provided by knowledge base just to verify. But in a real scenario, we have to integrate this with the chat bots because most of the organizations will be developing chat bots and we want to make sure that it is uh, integrated or in, uh, we can integrate this with the chatbots in the organization. So how to create a chatbot? For that, we in the left panel, we have to click on the deploy knowledge base and we can click on the deploy button. That means here left side, there is an option for deployment. So you need to make a deployment first. So I can click on this deploy and just say deploy. So this Margis travel project is. You can see the deployment is in progress. Yes, you can see. So here is the prediction URL because after the deployment, the service is accessible using a REST API, right? So that is the REST endpoint we can see by clicking on the prediction URL. So this is what it is. Now, if I want to create a chatbot, you can click on this create a chatbot that uses this particular uh, knowledge base. Click on this create a bot. See here. We are getting a custom deployment template. And this deployment template, we need to provide your project details, resource group, and other informations. After that, location, Central India or US, wherever you want. 
bot handle that is what should be the name of the bot service which is used internally for uh, accessing it so that is a bot handle that's a name so we can give this itself or if you want you can also provide a different value the pricing tier you can select we can change this to free tier right now for app id we have to create a new user assigned a managed identity for this we have to select the create a new user managed identity now in the web app configuration we have to specify the web app name language which is which can be used app service plan configurations so here we can go back in the app service we can select c sharp or something like that and uh, app service plan type we have to select create a new app service plan okay so it will automatically create a app service plan here inside the app settings you have to specify some parameters the first one is language resource key so language resource key is the language service when you create you will see you will see a key and endpoint right this is our language service as you can see this is the language service so this language services key i can take so i can take key one and put it here then we have our project name margis project name sorry margis margis travel language service endpoint that is fine subscription id resource group account name and then create you can see the resource is getting created it may take few seconds Okay, so let's wait for this to complete. Okay, it's done. So we can see the bot service is created. now we can go to the bot resource so here is the bot resource and you can see this is the bot web application okay 
but this is the bot web application if i want to go to the bot service it should be where, where is that yeah this is the bot service sin language bot so that is a bot service you can what you can do you can go to the test in web chat so this bot we can test in the web chat yes you can see there is a chat window open here you can simply try hi okay can you see we are getting the hi as the response what are the services you offer you can see marquis travels is providing the answer now how to book a ticket can you see the answer from that so user can type the question in any language like any language in the sense uh, it, in in any format like uh, it's not mandatory that you have to type your questions in the same format that you mentioned here so here you can see some questions like uh, how can i book a flight so it's not necessary that you have to type exact same question so uh, your knowledge base or your language service is capable to understand from the given text whether it is matching to this or not as you can see how can i book a flight is the question right but i have asked something different how how to book a ticket but you can see it is meaning since the context meaning is same it is uh, returning the answer for this right so i can ask a question about hotel booking so here you can see how do i reserve a hotel so how i can ask the question this time how to book a hotel room you can see it's coming the answer we partner with the best independent hotels all across the world so that is the answer for this so even though i am not using exact same phrase or same statement it is able to identify what is the context meaning of that question and then it will go and find out the answer for that right so that's it in uh, q a based service so creating a q a based service is very very simple you have to go to the azure portal and create a language service then come to the language studio and you need to create a question and an answering custom question answering project so there's a custom question answering project so in after creating the project you can add your uh data sources like uh, urls urls or pdf documents whatever so from where the questions needs to extract so that is a data source so once the data sources added you will be able to test there itself in the language studio itself you can test or after after deployment you can come to the azure board so when you deploy there is an option for creating a chatbot so after the chatbot is created you can come to the chatbot and directly converse with the q and a service right so without writing any single line of code we are now able to create a chatbot okay now coming back to this conversational language understanding or previously called as luis what is clu clu or conversational language understanding 
older name is Louis. So what, what is the use of conversational language understanding and how it is different from uh, the QNS services? In QNS service, we have a static set of questions and answers. We have a static set of question and answers. Whenever the user asks a question, it goes to that database, means knowledge base, and search for the matching answer and returns. That's it. But conversational language understanding is used mostly with the chatbots kind of applications, but its a, intention is different. So what is the use of conversational language understanding is whenever the user is asking for something, it is understanding what the user is asking and then execute an action. For example, you are all familiar with the Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant kind of uh, smart applications and services, right? So we can say, okay, can you play a song for me? Then Alexa will start playing. Or you are saying, okay, uh, uh, can you switch on the light? Then the Alexa is going to switch on the light if it is a smart light. Or can you switch on the AC for me? So it's going to switch on the AC. So you are giving some instruction or you are requesting something. So what, what the agent is doing, it will understand and then execute that, that op operation, right? For example, if I'm saying, can you uh, switch on the television or can you switch on the light? Then we need to understand that I'm giving an instruction or command. I'm not expecting any static answer. Instead of that, behind the scene, I'm, I'm, I want to execute a function, right? So for example, if I'm asking, switch the light on, which means I want to switch on the light. Or if I say switch the light off, it has to execute a different action. So the conversational language understanding's responsibility is to understand the utterance which the user is giving and then understand that comes under which intent. Intent means intent is a action type you can say and inside each intent there can be multiple utterances for example to, to switch on the light i can tell this in different ways can you please switch on the light please switch on the light uh, on the light or turn on the light so i can give the instruction in different uh, languages maybe as a command or as a request politely or any i can ask to switch on the light in different ways so the first thing is what he is asking. He is asking to switch on or switch off. So that I have to identify. What that is called the intent. So from the given text, that given text is called the utterance. And from the utterance, what is the intent? Means whether it is for switching on, whether it is switching off, or whether it is a search operation, what is the action we have to identify but if i have identified this action what action to perform then on which item i have to execute for example if i say switch on the light which means i want to switch on the light so light is the entity there because i want to switch on the light or if i say Okay, I want to book a ticket from Mumbai to Delhi tomorrow. So in that case, this is a ticket booking request. So we have to identify the intent as ticket booking request or ticket booking. And what is the, what are the entities identified from Mumbai? So Mumbai is a location and to Delhi. So Delhi is a location. And tomorrow is the date and time. So that is a date and time entity. So that means there are three entities. Mumbai and Delhi are location types. And uh, uh, tomorrow is a date and time type. 
so conversational language understanding as i have mentioned it is used to it is used to create chatbot kind of applications mostly because we need to uh, identify what the user is requesting so accordingly we have to perform some action so let's try this so i'm we have to go and create a language service okay since uh, this uh, while creating this language service we uh, we will be going into the uh, page see additional services keep the default section and click continue to create your resource so let's go to the portal See here, these are the default features. And if you are implementing custom question answering, then only this is required. And here you can see custom text classification, custom named entity recognition, custom summarization, custom sentiment analysis. If you need these features, then only this is required. So I can go to this and continue to create a resource. Okay, free tier is fine. That is creating a language service, and we have to go to language studio because any language service creation we have to do it through language studio so. is that created okay you can see it is now created we can go here and if from the settings we have to select the directory and inside the resources we can see there are multiple resources you can see this is the one which i have created just now so i'm selecting this and switch resource So you can see SIN CLU is selected now. Now we can create a new project. Okay. And this time we will be selecting the conversational language understanding type. So we will go language studio, create a new project. And this time we have to select conversational language understanding. The project name we can specify okay some unique name my clu 
perfect. Description. Why the language is not listing there? Something went wrong. A simple home automation is a description. Next year we can review and create. So we are creating a conversational language understanding project. Now we need to create intent, utterances, and entities. Intent means what are the different actions we have to perform. So inside the schema definition so here is the schema definition left side so you can go to intents and then you can see there is a default intent called the none but we have to go and create a new one and you can specify the value as or the name as switch on because it's a switch on activity so what is the activity name that you have to specify here. So because what is the action you are going to execute? It's a switch on action or switch off action or it's a create action, something. So whatever is the action you want to perform. So here, since it is a home automation, like a switch on the light, switch off the light kind of thing. So it's a switch on action, right? Now you can see it is uh, creating an intent and uh, you can go to the data labeling and here you can see the switch on is selected. Okay, so if you go to the data labeling or when you click on that particular intent, it goes into this uh, data labeling and what you have to do? Next to the switch on, we have to provide an utterance that is turn the light on. So what are the different utterances? Utterances means what is the uh, action that you are going to perform? Okay, so what is the instruction you are going to provide? So here you can see turn the light on. So that is a utterance. Similarly, we can also provide multiple other utterances under the same because I can give the command in using different uh, statements, switch on the fan, put on the fan, put the light on, switch on the light, turn on the turn the fan on. There are different ways. So we these are alternate text. So we have to provide this. Here, give the second. Now, this is the third. Type it and press enter. Here, this is the next one. Make sure that all comes under the switch on activity or switch on intent. So all these comes under the switch on intent, right? So you can see all these are switch on action. On the labeling entities for training. Let me save it.
on the labeling entities for training pane on the right hand side screen select labels and then add entity so we have to add entity so entity means it can be some kind of uh, uh, name that represents the person object location or item something like that so here we want to switch on some device so the, like a fan is a device light is a device uh, ac is a device a refrigerator is a device so we want to turn on a device so that device i can create as a entity type so i can go here add an entity and i can specify entity name as device and what is the type of entity you can specify so device and we can specify the list list means we can provide a, a uh, list of items means the multiple entities can come there right so this entity name is device and the type is list i'm saying it is a listed type of entity and click on add right so here you can see device is the entity now if you if you come here this fan is a device right so select and you can make it device light you can select and this is also device this is also light which is a device here also fan which is a device there is a fan which is also comes under the device this light this is also a device so i have selected all the device and uh, added into or i have selected the uh, entity type as device can you see here we have selected all these okay so we have to select the light or fan and then set the uh, entity type as device now we can go and save those changes so you can see we have created an entity that is device and in that utterances wherever the entity is coming i'm just marking it okay fan is an entity light is an entity then uh, any other device if you have mentioned that all uh, all these are in every utterance you can see there is a entity now we have to add a new intent called a switch off so if whenever we create switch on we also need to create a switch off so we can go to the schema definition create another intent called a switch off when you click add it goes here and here i am clicking on switch off and we can add some utterances inside it like a turn the light off make sure from here you are selecting switch off now these are some examples which i can put And here also i can mark this is a device type this 
is again device this is device this is device this is a device this is also a device type so i have selected all and saved this changes so you can see there are six items right comes in under this so you can see that is done so we have two intent if you see there are two intents we have created none is the default one so that is that will be there that we don't need to consider switch on and switch off are the two actions that is intent and inside each intent we have i think six and six utterances so six utterances means there are six statements which it tells to switch on the devices six statements to switch off the devices and there is a device entity and uh, that entity is used in both the intents now we can train the model we can just go to the training jobs and we can start a training job and train a new model and we can specify a name suppose home automation one and training mode standard uh, free and data splitting select automatically split the testing set from the training data keep default percentages that means whenever we do the training we have to divide your data into training data and the validation data or testing data right so how many how much data we have it will automatically divide that into uh, appropriate ratios like uh, how, ma how, ma how many uh, how much percentage you want for testing sorry the training and validation so here you can see 80 percentage and 20 percentage is the default values we are keeping so let it be i'm just uh, training We can see the training process is going on. Okay, you can see the training is succeeded. Now we have to deploy and test it. So let's go to deployments. We have to click on add a deployment. Click on this add a deployment and specify a deployment name. I'm giving same name. which model i want to deploy so from here we can select the just now i completed one model so i'm selecting that model and click on deploy okay it's done Now we can go to testing deployments and from here we have to select a deployment. 
like the home automation. That's the name of the deployment. And here we have to enter the text, right? So here we'll try with a text. Turn on the fan. Run the text. So you can see here. Intents detected. Top intent is switch on. So it is identifying that this is a switch on action. So 98 percentage confident that it is what what type of action switch on action. And what is a device detected from here? We can see entity. There is one entity detected that is fan. Confidence is 100 percentage. Suppose if I instead of fan, if I use maybe AC. Run it. And you can see device, it is detecting AC as the device. Okay. Or if I say switch off the light, and I'm testing this. It is understanding, yes, this is a switch off action. And the the device detected is light. That means we have to perform a switch off action for which device light. Or if I put some different one, maybe I can say, can you please turn on the AC? So if I'm giving very completely different one, then it may not be able to successfully map, but, but we can add this into the utterances list later and then retrain the model and redeploy. But yes, you can see it is 87%. Even it is not 100% confident. You can see 87% it is confident. It is what action, which on action it is. Right. But entity it is not able to detect. From this, not able to detect. So that we have to add this and then we have to retrain the model. OK, so that's it in the. Language understanding service that is conversational language understanding because here we have created a conversational language understanding project. We have defined the uh, intents. What are the different intents can be there? And inside each intent, we have multiple utterances. And then we have created entities. Entity name is device because inside the utterances, I have used a light fan, that kind of devices, so that I have mapped it to the device entity. Then we have done training. After training, we have deployed. After deployment, we have tested this. Okay, so once you feel that uh, the model is now ready for public access, we can access this deployed model. Suppose if this is OK, we can use this prediction URL for. Uh, consuming from the client applications. So that's it about. The conversational language understanding service. Now let's talk about speech recognition and synthesis. Speech recognition means whenever we use the speech to text service, it is capable to uh, convert the audio, the recorded audio or the microphone audio into a text format. Means we can transcribe the audio into text. For example, whenever uh, a person speaks in the mic microphone immediately it can be converted into text in real time that is speech 
to text. I think uh, you can see in YouTube, there is an option for generating the captions, right? Or uh, uh, text, whenever you play the audio, if somebody is talking, it can generate the captions. So that is an example of speech to text capability, right? But yes, uh, understand in YouTube, maybe using a different model or different service, but it's a, that's the same service that we can use for converting the audio into text. Similarly, the text can be converted into audio, that is text to speech capability of speech service to generate audible speech from the text. So what, what is the uh, additional point we need to understand here? Whenever we use uh, text to speech, we can use different uh, audio uh, formats means speech uh, voice like a male voice female voice young male voice young female voice like this and there are different uh, audio variations available so if you generate an audio or if you do speech synthesis you can generate the audio in various uh what to say audio formats audio format in the sense is not file format i'm referring to i'm saying the voice types okay and when you create speech to text service it is also possible to translate this into different languages also So there is a demo on that. To understand what is the speech service, we have to use the speech studio. So we can go to the AI speech studio. Here you can see some examples which is given already. Okay, so if you click on this first one, captioning with a speech to text, if you click here, below you can see there are two options, real-time captioning, which means whenever you play the audio, we can see, Right, so you can see here whenever this person start speaking after a few milliseconds, you will see the real time caption generated here. Right. So anyway, <clears throat> so uh, the speech service or speech uh, studio helps you to try out these things. If you want, you can go with. Uh, your own video also, but for that you have to log in and create the resources. So here I am, I'll just log in with my credentials. So now we have to go to settings and create a speech resource. So go to settings, create a resource. Okay, my which subscription is selected here? Okay, directory is wrong. Okay, so one service is already there. So I can use this instead of creating a new one. This is a multi service account. I can go ahead with that. 
explore speech to text in speech studio. So what I can do, we can go to this URL and download this speech zip file. This one. Let me extract this one. What AI can do? So this is the file. So what we have to do on the get started uh, speech page under speech to text, find real time speech to text, select try out real time speech to text. So we have to go here. Yeah, here real time speech to text. We can select this. Right. And we can upload this file here. What AI can do. So I am uploading it. And you can see the caption is generated. Right, so you can see it is creating the text from the audio, right? So we can upload any audio file. So from this audio file, it is capable to generate the text that is speech to text example. So this is just to understand how this works when we use an audio file from this audio file it's creating the text content right so that is the speech service it's a very simple example right so we just uploaded a file and that is just creating a caption for this Okay, so that is. So that's it for the audio, that is the speech studio service. Then there is another lab which is associated is analyze text with the language studio. So if you want, you can try this lab as well. This is just to understand how to analyze the given text using the language studio so for that we have to create a language service and then go to the language studio so we already have the language service so we don't need to go and create again so this is the language studio and here, if I want, I can switch the resource. So we can try this one, analyze the reviews in Language Studio. So for that, we can go to Language Studio and we can select the classified text tab so from here we can select the classified text in the classified text there is an option analyze sentiment and uh, mind uh, opinions under the text language select english under your resource select your resource so we are selecting this and here we are selecting our resource, selecting this. Okay. Next, uh, we have to copy this and put it here. So here you can see this is the given text. So it is analyzing text and the result is displayed here. 
So document sentiment positive is 0, 0.0, neutral is 3, and 96 percentage negative. As you can see, this is an old hotel that has been around uh, has been around since 1950s, and the room furnishings are average, becoming a bit old now and require changing. The internet didn't work and had to come to one of their office rooms to check for my flight home. Okay, so that means this is a negative feedback, right? So that's the reason it is clearly saying the, what is the sentiment? It's a negative sentiment. And from this text, it is identifying that tired hotel. So this is what uh, the opinion that is what is uh, that what is that what is the opinion about that particular feedback this is tired hotel with a poor service right so this is opinion assessment is poor okay and the, here this is the target is hotel so the it is talking about the hotel so tired hotel and the poor service and the uh, sentence sentiment, it is negative. Opinion is hotel, uh, target is hotel, and uh, assessment is tired. So it is tired hotel is a negative sentiment, and it is poor service. So that is again a negative one. So internet work. So this is didn't work is your uh, opinion, and that is focusing on the uh, internet. So we what was not working? Internet didn't work. So work is the word which is used to assess the uh, internet. So internet was not working, right? So that was the feedback. So you can see how it is. Uh, processing this word, whenever we give one text, it is evaluating that uh, sentiment and it is saying the overall sentiment. The overall sentiment is 96 percentage negative and it is showing the opinion also, right? So poor service, tired hotel and all. And uh, the internet didn't work. So that's it from this module. OK, so this third module is about natural language processing services where we have seen the uh, uh, question and answering, conversational language understanding, and also speech service where we have seen the uh, speech to text and also finally the text analysis for identifying the sentiment so all we have tried using the uh, studio that is language studio or speech studio so that's the end of third module now we have two more modules but we can take a quick break of 10 minutes and after 10 minutes we will be continuing the session so now you can take a break
Okay, all are back. We'll continue. So let's continue the session. Now we are moving to the next module. In this module, we are going to talk about document intelligence and knowledge mining services. The first one is document intelligence service. So what is this document intelligence service? Previously, this service is called form recognizer service, but now it is renamed into document intelligence service. So what is the use of document intelligence service? The document intelligence service is typically used to convert your documents or forms or receipts into digital data. For example, we have lots of uh, Means there are organizations they use uh, paper documents. Okay, in older days they were using the paper documents, all the customers' details, employees' details, everywhere, everything were stored in the papers. <laughs> but now everything is digitalized, so we have to convert all this data into. Uh, systems or digital data and store into the databases. But the problem is these documents may be handwritten or may be printed. So what we have to do, we have to read this document content or we have to convert this document content into the database data. But the problem is if you manually look into the document and type into uh, an application or some other uh, service, it will be very time consuming process. So what we have to do, we have to read that text content from those documents and automatically uh, map this with the entities. For example, if there is a first name field, so read the value from that uh, first name uh, section and map it to the first name value or from last name you have to value uh, read the value and map it to last name or email value we have to read and map it to email column so how you do that so for that we use document intelligence service means simply we have to read from scanned documents or pdfs or some other receipts or bill, we have to read the text content and store into our digital systems like databases or somewhere else. But the problem is there are different uh, types of documents. So some documents are standard documents, like if you see uh, tax uh, reports. So tax report is coming as a document, and in all over India, that, that's a common format or some kind of government documents if you say all these have a same standard format or some documents which are globally used they will have a same standard structure like some receipts or bills or invoices so they have some standard structure so this document intelligence service uses some pre-built models or the users can create their own model means they can customize the models to read the documents from the scanned pages or scanned doc documents so document analysis service returned data representations regions of interest and relationship configure analyze options for free and a chargeable analysis means from the documents, you can read the complete text content. 
from wherever you want. Suppose you want to read all the paragraphs uh, to be read and put into the uh, Word document. So you can read all the paragraph contents without images or with images. So you can read those contents and put into this. So if I want to scan the old book documents, means the old, old books, so there may be no digital copy available, but I have to read that document and uh, create a digital document. So what we can do, page by page, we can scan and convert that into digital text. So we can use a document analysis service for that. There are some pre-built models for invoices, receipts, IDs. OK, so which means uh, ID means the SSN, uh, SSI, social security number, SSN number, then uh, the, the uh, ID card, employees ID card or PAN card, Aadhaar card. They have some standard formats, right? So there are in uh, US also, there are some, uh, what to say, uh, standard uh, mod, uh, standard ID cards there. So they, they, uh, they can be scanned using the pre-built models because uh, not every document type or invoice type is not available. But yes, uh, if you have some custom requirement, means you want some custom format data to be read, you can use custom customized or uh, customization is possible for your document intelligence service. So using the pre-built models, you will be able to in, read the invoice, receipts, IDs, and other documents. But in case if you want, you can also have the option for customizing. So at least five sample documents you have to upload and mark what are the things to be uh, read. So the, after that, you will be able to upload your own document and it will automatically read the data from that. So from the custom document, if you want to read, you need the customized models. Analyze forms with the document intelligence service. So we can extract information from scanned forms in image or PDF format. Use the pre-trained models for common document types such as invoice, receipts, IDs, etc. And train a custom model using your own form. Suppose if an organization is using their own uh, document structure or a form, so that may not be available as a pre-trained model type. Such cases we can use custom documents or custom models for reading uh, from such documents. Models perform semantic recognition of form fields, not just text extraction. So it is also reading uh, the text, but not only the text, but it also identify what is that particular value. For example, in this document, right side, you can see at the top, you can see North Wind Traders. So it is not only just reading that as a uh, text, but also it will identify that, okay, this is the vendor name or supplier name or who is issuing this in their name. And 123 Main Street is the address of the vendor. And 555-123-4567 is the phone number. And the received date or bill date is 2-17-2020. And time is 13.0-1307, right? So it is not only extracting the text, but it all automatically map them to the corresponding form fields. Document Intelligence Studio is a uh, environment or a, a portal where you can try the document scanning. So using no code approach, you can explore the functionality using samples and your own documents. So if you have your own document, you can even upload and try. First, we have to create a resource that is document intelligence resource need to be created and then go to the document intelligence studio and then read, uh, try to scan the documents using the document intelligence studio. 
So very simple example we can try. Let's go to this. So this is the lab or demo for this. So we can go to Document Intelligence Studio. And here we can log in. This is my directory. So here, I need to select my subscription. And under this subscription, I have a multi service account is already there. Either I can use that or I can go and create a new resource, new document intelligence service I can create, or I can create use the multi-service account. I already have a multi-service account, so I'm not going to create a new one. So I'm skipping this step because I don't want to create a new resource. So I'm selecting this one. And then say, use this resource. Now, to analyze a receipt in the document studio, first we can download sample image. Just save this image into desktop. Then inside the document intelligence studio, we can go to get started page. And here we have something receipts. So this is the pre-built models. And click on receipt and try it. Right, so we have to go to receipts and select tryout. In the pre-built drop-down list, make sure the receipts is selected. Right, so you we have here pre-built. You can see these are some pre-built uh, document styles or document formats and here you can see receipt is the selected one now we can use the browse for files to upload this receipt here click on this browse to upload this receipt see you can see this is the document now click on the run analysis to see how it is extracting this. You can see North Wind Traders is mapped to merchant. Merchant name is content is North Wind Traders, value is North Wind Traders, and the main street, 123 main street is the merchant address. This is merchant phone number. This is transaction date and time. This is the item the item ID. The, sorry, this quantity description and the total price. Again, quantity description, total price. And here is the subtotal. Here is the total tax. And here is the total amount. So it is automatically extracting and mapping that values to appropriate fields, as you can see. This is the address, merchant name, phone number, subtotal, everything is red. Right? So, document intelligence service, we have used a pre built model to understand how it works. So, we have uploaded a receipt and checked how it is able to read the content from the documents and it, how it is mapping to that appropriate fields. 
So if you have some other document, you can try that. So there is a sample document which is available here. You can try this also. So here, this is the receipt. Merchant name is Contoso. This is the merchant address, date and time. And these are the items, descriptions and other things, right? Right, so this. So these are the standard because you can see the delivery fee and service free uh, fee are not uh, there in the standard bill uh, receipts. So that's why it's not reading those content. So some other samples also given here. This is the merchant name, address, phone number, date, okay, and these are the items, right? So that is the document intelligence service. This is just for your understanding what is the document intelligence service. So you don't need to go into the details and do the end to end. Now the Azure AI search service. So what is AI search service is it's a data mining service. So why we have to use this data mining service since we have lots of information stored in our database. But identifying a valuable information or relevant information from that is very difficult so not only database but also i may have my data inside some files okay maybe inside the blob storage i have stored up i have uploaded some pdf documents or word documents and i want to search for a particular item for a particular content it will be difficult for us to find a relevant information from that particular data source. So why I'm using the word data source means data may come from a database like a relational database or a no SQL database like a Cosmos DB or it may be from the web URLs or uh, the, the uh, blob files which is stored inside the uh, Azure blob service anywhere. Okay, so somewhere in the data source we have lots of information stored but identifying or reading a particular information from that is very very difficult right so and it's a time consuming the organizations have a lot of content data is locked away in document pdf handwritten notes etc time consuming it's a time consuming process and a labor intensive to find the data knowledge mining finds insight at scale. So now what is the benefit of using knowledge mining service? It will help you to go into the data source and fetch the relevant information for you. The Azure AI search is Azure's AI powered knowledge mining platform, which means we can use the AI powered knowledge mining service that is Azure AI search or also called a cognitive search. Solutions provide access through, for example, search, uh, example bots to answer the questions, dashboards, business applications, availability for further analysis. So that means it will help you to go and extract information from various sources, maybe from a document or files or uh, databases or somewhere else. So what? are the steps we have to follow here. The first, we have to ingest the data because whenever we create a knowledge mining service, that is AI search service, the first step is to configure the data source. That means we have to tell the AI search service from where the data is coming. So that means we can say the data can come from a blob storage container, which means the files which is uploaded in the blob storage 
or it can come from the Azure SQL database or Cosmos DB uh, uh, data lake store or the Azure table storage. So there are many uh, data sources we have. So we can configure them with the AI search service. So the AI search service can go to the database or files and extract those informations. But how it extract? It use AI enrichment and indexing. Means it is not only going into that, it is simply it is creating an index of the retrieved data. So after reading that documents, it create an index. And this also uses AI enrichment. Means if there are some translations required or some other maybe uh, some kind of uh, AI powered AI, AI language services need to be used. Like uh, uh, first one is translation. Okay, so you can use it or if there are some images from that images, it can read the text contents or from the image, it can read the image information. All can be retrieved using the AI services. That's why we are saying AI enrichment and indexing because before indexing, it is retrieving the data from data source. The data source may contain some images or it may contain some data in a different language. So we can use data uh, language translation and then store the data. Or if there are images, from the images it, it can extract the information. So it use an index to store the information about the data. Then explore is the next step from the AI search service itself or from the client applications, we can make a request. So it's a simple REST API request, which will help you to connect to the AI search service and get the information. Means you are making a query, query in the sense, a search query, and the search service go to the index and find the matching information from different data sources and returns to you. <laughs> AI enrichment in AI and in in Azure AI search AI enrichment makes the content more useful for search purposes. Enrichment enrich the content is created by the skill sets that recognize entities in the text, translate the text, evaluate the sentiment, etc. A skill set produces enriched documents consuming during indexing or projected to a knowledge store. So that means from the data source, when we extract the information, we can also use some AI skills uh, to enrich this. That means identify the key entities from this or translating from one language to another language or identifying the sentiment. So we can later go and search show me all the positive feedbacks it will show only the positive feedback because we can use the sentiment analysis while in, while uh, indexing so if i am using sentiment analysis while indexing it will store the sentiment information also so whenever i go and search for a positive feedbacks it will be able to easily return the uh, what to say uh, comments or feedbacks that is having positive feedback. Serialized data is passed to the search engine for indexing. So once the data is retrieved, that will be serialized into text format and passed to passed to the indexing engine. So there is an indexing engine which creates the index based on that documents knowledge store data sync created by the ai search enrichment pipeline so it is creating a data store so because all the indexed data will be stored inside the data sync 
let me show you an example of this, how this can be done. It's a very simple example. So for that, the resources we need is we have to create Azure AI search service and the Azure AI services. So let's go to the Azure portal. And we can create a AI search service. OK, so here. I'm into the Azure portal and I can search for AI search. This is the AI search service. While creating, we have to select. The resources, it is resource group. Search service name, I can say sim. Search. Location I can select East US. So maybe Central India. Pricing tier, I think basic is fine or free also. I think yeah, basic is fine. So here you can see the difference between the pricing tiers. Basic pricing tier means 15 index we can create. But free means only three index can be created and the maximum storage capacity is 25 MB for vector storage. Total data storage is 50 MB. So here vector storage for embeddings, it is 1 GB. Uh, for storage, it is 2 GB. And standard things you can see it is giving more storage capacity and other features. So I am creating a search service. Now we have to create an Azure AI service also. I think AI service we already have. But I need to confirm which location. So this is created in central India. And I have. So oh, this is in East US I have created. OK. Let me create. Let's create an Azure AI service. Create. Let me give the same location. Central India. Okay, I'm creating the AI service also. Now we need to create a storage account.
OK, let's create the storage account. I think it's we have a storage service. Let's confirm the location. It's already in Central India, so we don't need to create it again. We already have a storage account, so let it be. So we have to upload the documents to Azure Storage. So we can go to storage account. And inside the containers, we are creating a container and its name is coffee reviews. the access level we have to modify. OK, so I have modified the permission. Okay. Now we have to open this uh, reviews file, download this reviews file. Yes, these are the different uh, reviews. We have to upload this container we i'm uploading this to this container okay just uploading all these reviews yes you can see all the reviews are uploaded here now we need to index this document so we have to go to the search service and create an index we have to go to this add index sorry not in uh, creating index before that we have to import the data so we have to import the data we can select here blob storage we have right so we have to select the blob storage and we have we need to specify the parameters so here data source name data to extract content and metadata parsing mode is default connection string choose an existing connection that's fine Container name. So, what was the container name? Coffee reviews, I think. Okay, coffee reviews is coming. And let leave the other things. Okay, with a description if you want. Next, add cognitive skills. So in the add cognitive skills, attach cognitive services section, select the AI service. So this is the one. Right, so we have the sin ai service is there in the same region so that is selected then in the add enrichment section skill set name we can set it to coffee skill set
this one and uh, select the checkbox enable OCR and merge all text into merged uh, merged content field. So we have to means if there is any uh, image and inside the image if there is some text we have to read that text and merge it with the text content. Ensure that the source data field is set to merge the field. Change the en enrichment granularity uh, to pages. 5000 character chunks. Don't select enable incremental en enrichment. And in the fields for enrichment, we can select extract location names. Right. Extract key phrases. Yes. Then we have to detect sentiment. Yes. And after that, uh, generate tags from images. Yes. And also generate captions from images. So it is using the image skills service also to extract the information under the save enrichments to knowledge store select image projections image projections documents pages is the uh, We have to create a container and select knowledge store. So here we can create a container. Knowledge store and uh, access level. Private it's fine. OK, so this is done. So image projections done. Available table projections, documents, pages, key phrases, entities, etc. Right. Then select Azure Blob Projections document. A setting for container name with the knowledge store container auto populated displays don't change the container name so we don't need to select this so this will be as it is so what it is doing it uses the ai skills to read the informations from images or it also identify the sentiments or it also translate the text if required so all these informations it extract and store Then select next customize target index. So here index name you have to specify. So we can specify the name as coffee index. Ensure that the key is set to metadata storage path. Right, so here you can see metadata storage path. Uh, leave the suggestor name blank and the search mode as auto populated. This is blank and this is whatever is the available one. That will be. And review the index fields default settings. Select filterable for all the fields. Uh, that they are that already selected by default. So we have to make filterable for all the fields. Right. So whatever fields we have, all the fields we have made filterable.
sites select filterable for all the fields that are already selected by default then select create an indexer so this indexer is going to uh, index create the index but do we need to run this index only once or we have to run it periodically because later if you add more and more reviews we have to again re-index so if we want to re-index then we have to set to the schedule like hourly daily or custom schedule so once means it is indexing only one time the indexer name we can name as coffee indexer and schedule is set to once because since we are doing it for a demo once indexing is okay in advanced options we have to and select base 64 encode keys okay that is selected and submit Now we can see the indexing is going to happen. So here indexers you can see in the left side. This is the indexer creation. Here you can see how many documents succeeded. Yes, you can see nine out of nine documents and inside the index. If you go, there is an index. You can see currently it is document count is zero. Okay, later it will come. It will create the index. So if you go to this indexer. And you can see. It created. And you can run the indexer to generate this index, right? So, uh, so if you want to manually create an index, you can click on this run. Okay, so since this is already executed once, we don't need to do that. So if you suppose if you have added more documents and you want to re-index, you can click on this run. Now we have to query we have to try this we have to query this for that we can go to the search explorer in the overview page there is a search explorer in the search explorer we can select which index that is coffee index and here we can put the search query suppose if you are trying to search about this suppose we can put see here you can see i'm searching for all so it uh, gets this information can you see it uh, returns lots of reviews informations the key phrases it extracted sentiment this is positive and uh, from the another review you can see this is sentiment is positive here the sentiment is negative okay because the review is today i was truly disappointed with how long I had to wait for the pastries, something. So it's a negative feedback. Okay. So anyway, you can see it is easily extracting the information from the document. And you can easily query this by using this uh, search service. Right. Now, if I want to get some information about a specific attribute, as you can see here, since a star is given, it's look for all informations available. But here we are searching 
on the locations field that location is chicago right so here you can see locations colon chicago that is the text field and here json field is this one if i search and you can see it is returned only two three documents right it's not all because somewhere you can see the chicago Yeah, here you can see. So this document contains the word, right? Chicago. So it's extract that. And it's here also locations under the locations. So see locations, Chicago is there. So there are documents that contains location, Chicago. Here also. Now, if I want to search for the sentiment negative, means inside the sentiment field, I want to search for the negative sentiments only. Then I can search and you can see this here sentiment is negative. So there is only one document which is negative feedback. Okay, so that is the uh what to say ai search service and if you remember that inside the storage account we have created a container that container contains what so if you go into this here we have a knowledge store and here you can see for each document it created one data or one JSON file. Right. So you can see this is what extracted using the AI enrichment. So for each document, it extracted the key phrases. Okay. And from the images, it extract some images, uh, image informations. There is a caption, right? So that means for every document, it creates a, a corresponding entry inside of this knowledge store. Because whatever documents we have, it is creating and is uh, creating an entry inside of the knowledge store because. The knowledge store is mm. storing the information in the JSON format about each document. So using the AI services, what are the information it is extracting? That information will be stored inside the knowledge store container. This is the AI enrichment informations are stored. As you can see, this is what I have showed. So this is the images which is extracted. Right. So this is in some document, there is an image. So it is extracted those images also and stored it here inside the coffee skill set image projection. And this is for storing the AI enrichment result. So that's it in the AI search service. Because AI search service is a knowledge mining service that helps to extract information from documents and it can use the AI capabilities to extract some additional information like uh, sentiment, language, uh, image information, et cetera. Now we are moving 
to the final module that is gen ai that is generative ai nowadays this is one of the hottest topic generative ai so in this we will be looking what is generative ai and what are the models available in azure open ai so what is generative ai in simple language if i want to say it is a subset of ai it means it is also an ai service but how the a generative ai is different from the uh, traditional ai or the uh, uh, other ai services we have so the other ai services does not generate any new information so what it is doing the ai services so far we have discussed it is either extracting the information from a resource or data and then projecting it right for example from the image it is generate the caption generate means it is not creating the image it looks into the image and creating the caption for it or it is looking into the image and listing all the objects available in the image or if you are giving a text it is identifying what are the entities inside that text or what is the sentiment of the text that's the only thing it does it does not create a new text right but generative ai is going to create new original contents that's why it is called a generative ai so it is generating some new informations that's why it is called a generative ai it is capable to generate text image audio and even application code the large language models are running behind this generative ai uh, services what is mean by large language models they are a special type of machine learning models or deep learning models that uses a uh, neural network multiple layers of neural networks inside it and it can be used for various purposes for that whatever we do with the traditional ai service the same things it can also do like uh, detecting the sentiments summarizing the text translating the text all can be done along with it will create something new also so that's the power of generative ai it is not only doing the basic ai capabilities like uh, suppose if you talk about the text uh, models like a uh, sentiment analysis language translation or uh, 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 what to say entity recognition it also creates something new okay it can create something new which means if you tell the model okay can you create a story for me it will do that if you ask the model can you write a poem for me it will do that you can ask the model to create a uh, uh, blog it will do for you but the traditional ai services cannot do that so how this is possible because behind the scene or behind this uh, ai models they use a large language models that is llm large language models which is typically a deep learning model that uses multiple layers of neural networks copilot so copilots is a microsoft product or a service that is using this generative ai models behind the scene and this copilots are now integrated with almost every microsoft product we can see in windows we have copilot here if you see in the windows task bar you can see a copilot so this is actually a copilot right so you can ask the copilot this is called a windows copilot you can ask the copilot to write a poem about 
फ्लावर एंड बटरफ्लाई so you are asking something and this model is going to write a poem for you so can you see here it's writing a poem right so if you ask to write a story it will do for you so this is a windows copilot similarly in browser we have a bing copilot that if you open the microsoft bing like if you click on this can you see this is copilot which is part of the microsoft bing so here you can do the same thing so write a story of a king simple so that's going to write the story for us so this is a prompt prompt means what is the user asking so it is called a prompt and the response what is generated here is called a completions so this is a simple story created so what is copilot copilot is a microsoft product or service that uses generative ai models behind the scene it is using the generative ai models not simply it's a open ai models it uses and it is used in many places in windows in browser in uh, uh, ms office and it is also used by the developers in the name of github copilot so what is the benefit of using github copilot it will help you to write the code for example if you open visual studio code and if you have the github copilot installed so i don't have github copilot but i have some similar tools available let me show you an example so i have a python file so here i am just going to write a function so write a function to do binary search so you can see it automatically writes the code for me simple that's it so this is auto generated code and this is done by an a generative ai service so i am using codium ai and the code whisperer code whisperer is from microsoft sorry uh, from aws and codium is a different one i am not using github copilot so code whisperer is uh, aws uh, code generation tool suppose if you want to optimize this code you can easily select this function and say uh, refactor or maybe here uh, enhance this code here you can see it goes and checks whether it can be enhanced or not yeah. see it is updated so now you can see very less number of lines instead of more lines and it is also adding the function documentation right so you can see this way you can enhance the code so these can be done by github copilot also so what are copilots copilots are some agents or services that can run from many microsoft products and services like a microsoft edge browser copilot which means we have the uh, inside the browser we already have a copilot integrated if you go here you can see in the edge browser there is a top right corner there is a copilot integrated this is browser copilot and there is a bing copilot bing copilot is the one which i have showed here this is the one when you open the bing search it will open the copilot 
or GitHub Copilot. This is another Copilot which is uh, used inside the IDEs. Means if you are a developer, you will be using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code kind of tools, and GitHub Copilot can be used inside of this. Okay, and Windows Copilot inside of the Windows operating system, you can see a Copilot. So whenever you use uh, Gen AI, primarily the Open AI kind of uh, models. So the, not only Open AI, there are many other Gen AI models available. But if you see, Open AI is one of the most commonly used Gen AI uh, service. So if you see, uh, for generating this contents, we can use. Uh, prompt engineering. So what is prompt engineering? Prompt engineering is a technique of writing the prompt. It's not a tool or service or anything. Prompt engineering is a technique. How to write effective prompt. So instead of writing simple one line uh, instruction, you can elaborate the instructions so that the model will understand what exactly is required. I'll give you a very simple example to understand. Suppose my intention is to create. My intention is to create. 10 MCQ questions on. React or Angular or some other technology. OK, so what I'll do, I'll go to chat GPT. And I can ask chat GPT, can you create 10 questions? an MCQ because I don't know. I don't have time to create 10 questions and I need the answers for that. So I'm simply saying create 10 MCQ questions on React JS. See, it is creating the questions, but you can see there is no answers and there is no explanations. And I don't know whether this question is an easy level question or hard level question or uh, median level question. And what are the topics covered here? Maybe all questions are from basic level or very basic level question. But my intention is I'm I'm going to use this 10 question for an advanced uh, lateral session. So I cannot use this basic questions there. So I have to modify my prompt. So what I have to do, I have to update this prompt saying create 10 MCQ questions on React.js from uh, or with the answers, okay. Include questions from topics such as Redux, uh, books, methods, context API. Virtual DOM uh, and also JSX, etc. Now, also, I can explain in detail create three easy questions for medium questions and uh, three. Hard level questions. And save and submit. Now, if you see, it is categorizing that as easy. And easy questions will come here. And you can see it is including the question from the given topics. Median level questions. You can see Redux questions are there. Hoop methods are there. And hard level questions also there. Right. So with answers you can see so now when i modified my prompt and made it very clear that i need this 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 then it, it is able to understand my requirement correctly and it is producing the relevant and accurate answers for me right so this is the prompt engineering so when you create or when you write a prompt not simply writing it, you can include some examples. You can uh, uh, set the behavior of your assistant. There are a lot of things you can 
do while making a request. So that is what prompt engineering. So in prompt engineering, we can put direct message. That is, you can get the most useful completions by being explicit uh, about the kind of response you want. Suppose simply create a list of 10 things to do in uh, Edinburgh during August. So it is just direct question. Okay. But system message is something that you can use to set the behavior of the assistant. Like you are, you are, you are going to ask a model, right? So the model is going to act like a assistant. So what kind of assistant it is? So we can tell the model that way you are a code generator. So whenever I ask for any help, generate the code for it. Or I can say, okay, you are a uh, teacher. So whenever you ask some doubt, explain like a teacher. Or I can tell assistant, you are uh, an actor. So whenever you ask a question, you answer me like an actor. So we can set the behavior of that assistant using the system messages like a you are a helpful assistant that responds in cheerful friendly manner so it clearly tells whenever you answer don't just answer just make it friendly message or uh, funny messages or something can be included so you are setting the behavior of the assistant so system messages is an important thing providing examples so there is a concept like a zero shot, one shot, and few shot learnings, which means whenever you make prompt, you can also include some examples that, okay, I am expecting the answers like this. So first question and the answer, and the second question and the answer, third question and the answer. So you have given three examples how to answer. So the when you ask the fourth question, it will be answering like this format only. Okay, so you can provide some examples so that it will be able to produce the results uh, based on the previous examples. Grounding content, which means you can provide a content and you can tell the model, okay, based on this content, you do the or you generate the answers. For example, I'm telling, I'm giving a very lengthy paragraph about the artificial intelligence and then I am telling, okay, now create 10 questions based on this content. Or I am writing an article about the earthquake and then I am telling, okay, you can now summarize this, earth, this paragraph or this content. So it is going to summarize that paragraph or text what I am giving. So Bing Copilot, I have already showed you what is Bing Copilot. So there is nothing to do in this demo because I have already showed you what is Bing Copilot. Fundamentals of Azure Open AI service. So what is Open AI? Open AI is one of the largest generative AI model provider. They are providing different uh, Gen AI models like a GPT, DAL E, Whisper, Embeddings, Codex, and a lot of other things. So, Microsoft is now partnered with the Open AI, and these Open AI models are now available in the Azure Cloud. So, that means Microsoft is now funding for the Open AI uh, research company, and they are providing these open AI models in the Azure cloud. So that means instead of going to use the open AI directly, you can create an Azure open AI service and leverage the benefits of open AI plus the benefit of Azure cloud. So benefits of Azure cloud means network level security, authentication, high availability, all features you will get when you use Azure OpenAI. The Azure OpenAI consists of pre-trained generative AI models, customization capabilities, means you can 
customize your models. Built in tools to detect and mitigate harmful use cases so users can implement AI responsibly. Means the content filters, like I hope you remember the content moderation I have showed you, content safety. So, like this, the content moderation filters available so users will use the AI responsibly. Enterprise grade security with a RBAC and the private networks. So you know Microsoft is one of the largest cloud service provider. So they provide enterprise grade security, RBAC, role based access control and network level security using private networks. And any open AI service you have deployed on the Azure open AI, you will be able to access them using the programming SDK, REST APIs or the command line utilities. So what are the different models available in Azure OpenAI? We have GPT-4, which is one of the latest version of GPT models. That is generative pre-trained transformer. GPT-4 is the latest uh, transformer model available uh, in OpenAI. And that is available in Azure OpenAI also. So at, at the same time, you, if you are interested to use GPT 3.5, you can go with that. So GPT 3.5 is more faster than 4, uh, but GPT 4 is more accurate and uh, uh, what to say, uh, creative. Means if you ask uh, GPT 4 something, it will be able to generate anything and everything that you are looking for because it is more creative and uh, it is one of the powerful uh, GPT model. But speed compared to the 3.5, GPT-4 is little slow. Uh, 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 in in GPT-3.5, it uh, released the latest version of uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is uh, providing almost similar features of GPT 4. Embeddings is uh, another model which is provided by OpenAI for converting the text into the numeric values because machine cannot understand text. Machine can understand only numbers, right? So we have to convert our text into numbers, not binary numbers, floating numbers, and that will be the representation of your text content. Okay, so if you want to create numerical vector from the text, then you can use the embeddings model. This is primarily used in text similarity search. And DAL E, DAL E is still in preview. So DAL E3 model and DAL E2, both are available. So it's a image creation model, which means you can tell the model to draw an image of something and it will do for you. How to use Azure Open AI? It's very, very simple. You just need to go and create one Azure Open AI resource. And if from there, you will be able to navigate to the Open AI Studio. So I'll show you that directly. I already have uh, the I have the Open AI service created. See, this is the open AI service I have. So if you want to create a new one, you can just go and search for open AI. Okay, so you will be able to see the open AI and you can just create. I'm not creating because I already have this. So once you go inside the Azure open AI service, there is an option to go to open AI studio. So you can open this open AI studio.
So this is the Open AI Studio where you will see two sections in the left side, playground and the management. Okay, management section, you will see the models and what are the different models available in this particular region. So I have selected Sweden Central. If you notice this corner, you can see the location is Sweden Central. Okay. In Sweden Central, it is providing lots of models like a Babbage, Dal E3, DaVinci, GPT-35 Turbo, GPT-4, then GPT-4-32K, text embeddings, text, text to speech, text to speech HD. So you can see there are different models available. And if I want to consume any one of this model, you have to do a deployment. For example, if I want to use GPT-35 Turbo, I have to select it and do a deployment. When you click on deploy, it opens this dialog box. Here you can see GPT-35 Turbo is selected and you have to select a particular version or it will automatically update to the default version. Some name you can specify here. Okay, maybe my deployment, something. And then in advanced options, you can set how many tokens to be used per minute. So that means this deployment is consuming maximum how many tokens so that you can set here. Okay. So if you want five tokens to be used per minute, 5K token, not five token, 5K. 5,000 tokens per minute. You can specify set that and create it. It's a very simple. I'm not creating it because I have already deployed many instances. As you can see, GPT-4, 32K, GPT-35, uh, Turbo 16K, GPT-4 Vision Preview. Like there are different uh, models I have already deployed. So uh, let me delete one of that. So you can see there are different uh, models I have deployed. This is the embeddings model. This is the DAL-E model and this is the GPT model. Okay. Now if I want to use them, I can go to the playground. If I want to try, so I can go to the chat playground and here you can see three sections, setup, chat session and configuration. Inside the configuration, you have to select which GPT model you want to use. I have done a deployment. The deployment you can select. And from here, you need to set the system message. For example, here I can say, you are a Python developer. Okay. Writes code. Python or you are a developer is enough. You are a developer, uh, write code in Python. And if you want, you can put some examples, but this this character, there is no examples required. Suppose I can say apply changes. So I'm setting the system message or means I'm setting the behavior of the assistant as a Python developer. Now here, Look at that. I am going to ask a question. How to do binary search? Look at that. I didn't tell to write the Python code, but how it is writing the Python code? I just asked how to do bi binary search. It can explain in the statement or it can use C sharp or it can write something else. Then how it is writing in Python itself? Because here I have set the behavior of the assistant as write. This is a developer who writes the code in Python. So whenever I ask something, it will try to answer as a Python code. Or I can change it. You are a helpful uh, teacher. Save the changes. Now I change its a behavior to a teacher. And here I can clear the chat. 
how how to do binary search see same question i am asking but this time it is explaining things and then giving the answer right so you can see the answer is different uh, because previously i was just telling you are a python developer so it is simply writing the code directly but since here i mentioned that you are a teacher and then asking to do a binary search how do how to do binary searching it explain the step by step instruction then here is an example that it's giving right so that means it's a behavior has changed right so this is now giving focus to the explanation because it's a teacher right so that what is the use of system message it's for setting the behavior of the assistant okay so you are an assistant who talks like an american old movie I don't know how it behaves, but You can see now it is talking like an American movie character. Well, kid, let me tell you how to do a binary search. It's a classic move. Now listen up and pay attention. So you can see that 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 uh, tone of the dialogue, right? So how it is delivering things. So it is explaining things. Okay, instead of writing program, it is just uh, explaining things in that way, right? Right, so this is how we set the system message. Similarly, if you are working with the DAL E, so here I have the DAL E deployment there. So I can tell the model to draw some image. Draw an image of elephant. Elephant and lion draw an image of elephant and lion running a race. Let's see how what will what it is going to draw. Yes, you can see this is the image, right? Or you can say a realistic image. This is also good, but it's not realistic. This is the image which is created, or maybe a cartoon image. So theme is same, different styles of images I am creating. So we can see Dal E Playground help you to try and experiment something. See, nice image. Right. So that's the power of uh, Azure Open AI, and that is Azure Open AI Studio that help you to try something using the Open AI models.
the azure open ai's code generation capabilities i hope you understand that i have already showed you how the code can be generated but using the gpt model it is also possible to write unit test for your functions okay suppose if you have a function you can tell the model okay i want to generate unit testing for this so you just need to write a start point it will write the remaining code for you okay so uh, using this gpt models you can generate the complete python code not only python any language so you can generate the program code you can give the program code as an input and tell the model to write the unit test cases here like this so here you are giving the python code and just giving a command like unit test and starting of the function and it will automatically write the unit test functions for you okay image generation capabilities so open ai is capable to generate the images edit the images and uh, create multiple variations of the image like a uh, here you can see an elephant with a hamburger that is the prompt but more variations if i'm creating you can see different the four styles it is creating okay but in azure open ai when you use dal e3 you cannot do editing of image and the creation of variation but dal e2 version allow you to do image generation editing and the image variation creation so understand dal e2 is one of the uh, older version of dal e which is not that great but yes you can still use it it is capable to generate the images edit the images and also create variations of the images but dal e3 version can do the image generation but it cannot do editing of image and the variations at this time so maybe going forward it will add those features so that's it in this module since i have showed you the demo in the azure open ai studio i'm not going into the lab because in the lab also this is going to be the same demo so now we have done with all the modules and uh, if you have any questions you can post your questions in the chat and we can mm -hmm. wind up the session if you don't have any other questions okay here is a question what are llm llm means large language models which is working behind this uh, generative ai for example open ai when you use it is using a uh, uh, gpt model so behind the gpt model there is a large language model uh, used that is uh, using a transformer architecture means the neural network type which is used is transformer architecture which uses multiple layers of neural networks where the whenever you put some text data it will pass the text data through each and every layer and then finally produces the response so this uh, architecture or this model is called a large language model there are different large language models like a uh, cnn convolutional neural networks rnn recurrent neural networks transformer model uh, diffusion model so there are different uh, large language models there but some of them are used for text processing and some of them are used for uh, image processing and all so how to get windows copilot so windows copilot is by default feature available in windows 11 operating systems if you are using windows 10 you have to upgrade to windows 11 so if you see uh, in the 
task bar you will get the github oh, sorry windows copilot and there is nothing to do when i installed the windows 11 it's automatically came okay can uh, if you are not use uh, not getting this uh, can you confirm whether you, are you are using win, windows 11 home edition or professional or some other editions i'm not sure it is specific to some editions only okay if it is enterprise then you may you should get it so you can just enable it somewhere because i am getting it there is, there is no other maybe you have to go and enable developer experience in the settings i think so if you want it i'm not sure how i'm getting it because when i go into When I you know, installed the Windows 11, it automatically came. Okay, so if you have any other questions, please put the questions in the chat. Uh, thank you, sir, for this wonderful uh, session. Guys, before leaving this session, uh, I already shared feedback form. So guys, go and fill this feedback form.